here we go. What is going on everybody? My name is Mike from the Super Wheeler Bros and we are back once again to talk about The Walking Dead's 8th season. And this time, we are taking a look at episode number 2 entitled The Damned. I did really enjoy this episode. Just just to start things off, I did. There is some real big nitpicks I have, but overall, this is a very enjoyable episode. So let's go ahead and start breaking it down. There was a great job showing the division that can brew between different ideals between teeming factions on how to handle the saviors as Jesus is wanting to show mercy and Tara and Morgan are trying to kill everyone. Tara finally had something interesting to do and I'm glad Jesus actually got to develop his character into the voice of reason in the group rather than being, well, just a very, very, very pretty man. He's a pretty man. <laughs> and of course, Morgan turning into the frickin' Terminator and taking out savior after savior. <sighs> yes, that is a tasty morsel. More of that, please. And the plan to roll up in the armored cars performed by our Alexandria crew to box in the saviors and allow the fallen ones to turn and start munching on their cohorts is a rather brutal and innovative way to put an interesting wrinkle on a standard shoot 'em up scene. On the flip side of that sequence, however, with the shootout led by Aaron, Eric, and Tobin, there was an inordinate amount of time spent on this, and it just... it isn't very compelling, and it's kind of dull. For one, my god, it looks as though everyone has gone to the Stormtrooper Academy for shooting guns. They are using fully automatic weapons, for god's sakes from excruciatingly small distances. Don't you think these guys are bound to hit someone accidentally at some point? Because of the ineptitude on both sides, it kind of feels a little bit toothless. And with all of the time dedicated to the shootout, we did have to leave stories of what is happening with Maggie dealing with Gregory at the hilltop, which kind of completely ebbs the momentum that she had built as a strong leader from episode one, and Carl Michonne and Rosita at Alexandria and these stories didn't require a large chunk of time, but they could have broken up the monotony of that elongated action sequence with just a small cutaway. You didn't need much, it just would have probably helped make the flow a little bit better, and I would have liked to have seen what was going on with them. As comic fans may be aware, as part of the attack, Eric takes a bullet to the stomach, and will probably, no, I no, he's certainly going to die, and just who cares really they try to give him a couple of heroic moments to build him up for an emotional departure but the character has just been a periphery fringe character at best and completely useless at worst so that moment was a big waste of time just like i had been saying <laughs> and getting off of all the stuff that bugged me in this episode we ended the episode very strong with a lot of really good stuff ezekiel is one of the best things on the show right now he makes me laugh every time i see him his royal delivery is always entertaining and fun, and even when it feels like it's steering into being a bit too much, the curtain is then peeled back on his character, and we get lines like, Fake it till you make it, baby. To further enhance his reasoning behind his choice to be that way, and it's always spot on. As is his choice to only really do so with Carol because she has done similar things in the past and sees right through the facade. It strengthens the bond that they have so much. Plus, she even mauled a goddamn savior. I mean, come on! Doesn't get much better than that! I really enjoy Carol and Ezekiel's interaction, and it made their portion of the episode stronger. Plus, freaking Jerry. Hilarious. I love Jerry. Of course, we did finally get our two pillars of the show, the ones who make everybody else kind of feel unimportant, Rick and Daryl, together for once. I mean, do you really need more said than that? They are awesome together, and their chemistry is the best dynamic on the show. It's kind of a shame that they're not together more often, but like I said, it kind of renders the rest of the cast inert when they're together because they're just so much fun. Their systematic takedown of a potential weapons cache had some great tension throughout, and the sequence just continues to give Andrew Lincoln new ways to display his phenomenal abilities to emote both extreme vulnerability and badassery. The scene in which he sees the baby after killing that guy with the shelf, it was a little bit heartbreaking because he just, you realize he doesn't want to hurt everyone, 
and it was just fantastic acting on his part. I don't really have much more to say, it was great. A long lost friend in Morales showing up as a freaking savior is an absolute hell yes. A show that has been on as long as The Walking Dead, showing the ability to surprise its audience is a welcome sight and something that should be utilized more in the future. Not shock, but just genuinely surprising its audience, going in directions that is not expected. Even fans of the comic, you have to be able to kind of swerve them sometimes, something they were very adept at doing in the early days of the show. Morales is right in saying Atlanta was a long time ago, and I can't wait for him to find out that he doesn't know the Rick Grimes in front of him like he thinks he does. What a great way to close the show. It was very surprising, and I really, really enjoyed that little swerve, that little twist at the end of the episode and it only propels things forward we have a lot of interesting things that can happen next week which is kind of a good thing it's not leaving it on a bad note which is a lot of the problem that last season faced there is still some issues i still think stretching this out over four or five episodes it can be a mistake but also all out war in a comic book stretched itself out over i believe 10 to 12 issues so, if they only do this in a few episodes, I'm okay with that. As long as they don't stretch it out the whole season, I'm okay with that. That would be much better pacing than we saw last year. And, I, again, I, I really enjoyed this episode. There was a lot of good stuff. It, it slowed to almost a halt in the middle with the whole shootout and just taking forever to do something that should have been done in 10 minutes. There wasn't that many people there. It didn't and shouldn't have taken that long. It was really there to set Eric up as a big loss. And it's just not because his character hasn't been treated with that kind of respect the entire series. So why try to start now at his end? You have Aaron who has been treated with respect. Use him to emote and give us the feels. You don't need to do it through Eric. That's really my one big criticism of the episode this week. So overall, if I was going to score this week's episode of The Walking Dead, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Again, a very solid episode, maybe a step back from episode one, but still a very, very enjoyable episode. Tell me what you guys thought of this week's episode of The Walking Dead in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching this. Your support has been phenomenal. I love all of you guys. My name is Mike from the Super Wheeler Bros. And as always, my friends, have yourselves a super week.